Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I'm Billy Embody. Thanks for listening. We ran down kind of what went right, what went wrong in the 28-11 loss for SMU to Oklahoma in our post-game podcast. It is Monday night. We are going to obviously hear from the coordinators on Tuesday as well as Rhett Lashley on Wednesday. So we'll do a little bit more of some team stuff uh, come later this week. But we're here because SMU is once again heating up on the recruiting trail. But first, I got to tell you guys, uh, I just picked up our first ever Pony Express case with Epic Wines. So head to epicwines.com slash pony to get the full case of wine that Bill Armstrong and I are going to be tasting this 2023 season. Got some terrific wines in there. Again, with code PONY, you get free shipping on that case. So really saves you a good amount of money there. Um, and they'll get it to you uh, when they can as weather starts to cool down and things like that. So want to shout out our friends at Epic, first and foremost, uh, for their support of the podcast. I was flying back from a family event in San Diego on Friday ahead of driving up to Norman for the SMU OU game. And lo and behold, the Mustangs got great news on the recruiting trail when they picked up a commitment from four-star 2025 wide receiver Dalen Singleton out of DeSoto High right here in Dallas. And let me tell you, I think this pickup is a really good one for SMU because, one, as the news of the ACC came out, we wrote at OnThePonyExpress.com, which you you can try for just a dollar for your first month, join the club there, that the ACC would bring better recruits to the Hilltop. And I didn't know that it was going to come as quickly as Dalen Singleton wanted it to uh, in terms of bringing the news to the coaching staff. But we had written about him in an insider notebook that week that SMU was in good position. And sure enough, he announced his commitment to the Mustangs on Friday. This is a big pickup for the Mustangs in the class of 2025, which now ranks in the top 10 overall in the country early on here as we track the recruiting rankings. But nonetheless, uh, this is one of the top slot playmakers in the state of Texas. And for the Mustangs, this is a guy that they've had on campus a couple times now. Um, You see the on three RPM there. If you're watching on our YouTube channel, show that the Mustangs were the leader because of those visits, but he picked SMU over offers from Arkansas, Miami, Oregon, Texas A&M, and others. He's about 5'11", 170 right now, so we've got some updated uh, height and weight to him for the on three profile there uh, that'll be added on, on there soon. But when you look at what Dalen Singleton brings, he's going to bring some elite speed to this offense. And Rhett Lashley and this staff have done a good job of recruiting this slot position. They have Roderick Daniels, who was obviously here when they came in. Uh, Jake Bailey, same story there. But they go out and get Jackson Lavender in last year's class. I think he's going to be good. He's one of those guys that catches just about everything uh, when it comes to uh, what's thrown his way. And so for SMU to go out and add another slot in Dalen Singleton in this uh recruiting run that they're on uh, is big. Obviously, it pushes them up into the top 10, like I said. And look at the programs up there. Again, it's early on. Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Oklahoma, Michigan, and others in that top 10. But with Dalen Singleton now on board, SMU can work toward that outside receiver position uh, that they really have addressed through the transfer portal with guys like Jordan Hudson. They obviously brought in Jamarian Carroll, who we loved at on three as a 2023 recruit. He's an outside guy. And in the 2024 class, they don't necessarily have that you know, big wide receiver to go on the outside. Um, they need to continue to address that position because Jordan Curley will be gone soon. Um, some of those guys are getting a little bit older uh, in their college eligibility. So those guys will be out the door um, really before we know it. And so I like this pickup with Dalen Singleton. But again, now SMU in the 2025 class can move toward that dynamic outside receiver um, 
And, and I think for me, he has the elite speed that you want um, in a, in a slot. And, and he did that and he had some really impressive times early on um, as a, uh, as a freshman, as a sophomore. Uh, I'm looking forward to really seeing uh, what his times are when he gets back out there this spring in the track and field realm of things. But as a freshman to have a 2207 as a PR is really impressive. And he ran the second leg of that DeSoto regional qualifying uh, four by one, four by two relay team. And to be on those DeSoto teams, you got to have some serious wheels. So I think for me, this is one of those pickups where we talked about it. We talked about the ability of SMU to now recruit high level high school prospects. And they got that in Dalen Singleton in this commitment. And so it was a big piece of recruiting news that dropped. Um, I'm expecting him uh, to be at SMU's game against Prairie View a and I'm looking forward to getting out and seeing him. He got some varsity snaps as a sophomore at DeSoto, which is um, impressive. That's a state championship winning team. They just beat the brakes off of South Oak Cliff. So Claude Mathis, the former SMU assistant, has things trending in the right direction for another state championship, I would say. And Dalen Singleton is going to be a piece of that as um, we continue to track them through this 2023 season. But um, I think what's next now, and we're watching closely, is Keelan Russell, uh, who is the four-star quarterback of Duncanville. Um, He's somebody that has hinted that he's going to make a decision relatively soon here. And if that's the case, then SMU has to be considered really that that team to beat, in my opinion. And look, the on three RPM says as much as we uh, you know watch that, of course, as an indicator uh, for where guys are leaning. And Ole Miss has been really pressing for him in a big way. He's off to a strong start to his junior season, and you know about six two range there for him, and sits in the top one hundred for on three which is obviously very high praise. We saw him at the Under Armour Dallas event this spring, and he was right there throwing the football around with Kevin Sperry, who's committed to OU in the class of 2025, some other high-end prospects. And, you know, again, off to a really good start as a junior. I was able to see him in Ford Stadium actually, um, you know, beat a South Oak Cliff team that had just won a state championship. Obviously, Sock lost a lot of players off that team, but um, he's got them rolling again at Duncanville. They're gunning for yet another state championship, and I think you've got to consider them the favorite at the highest level of of, uh, Texas high school football. And I think when I watch Keelan Russell, he's got the arm to make every throw out there. He's got that ability to extend plays. I think his ability to feel pressure and extend those plays is something that Rhett Lashley and the staff really like. It's why they went out and targeted him as one of their top 2025 targets early on. You see him here on the YouTube extending that play. And this is one that, you know, Caden Durham, four star running back, just couldn't reel in. But uh, then you get into uh, what he can do with that connection he's got with DeCorey and Moore, one of the top players overall in his class in 2025. So um, you see him have that arm strength, that ability to make plays down the field is something that in this offense uh, would be terrific. So we're watching Keelan Russell. He told me he's going to make a decision here in the third or fourth week of his junior season and then lock in on uh, that state championship run, that push to go back to back uh, for Reggie Samples and that whole staff over there is real. And as I look at SMU's recruiting in Dallas, um, to have a guy like Keelan Russell would really solidify this class as having a chance to be one of the tops in the ACC. And for the ACC, that's what it's all about as SMU looks to um, you know, recruit for that conference uh, as they step into it in 2024. And, um, I think looking at SMU with that overall um, boost that they've gotten from going to the ACC, as well as just the NIL in place for SMU, SMU should be right there 
in the top three or four for that conference when they get there. And the thing about it is they have recruiting powerhouses like Clemson, like Florida State. Uh, those are the ones that you're going to watch, Miami. Um, but for SMU, with NIL being such a piece for them, I think you've got to consider them a potential recruiting power in that conference. And Keelan Russell would, when you look at recruiting rankings and how you're able to climb the ladder, having a highly touted quarterback committed is one of the ways to certainly do it. And I still think the blueprint is for SMU to go after high-level Texas players with maybe some sprinkling of high-profile out-of-state guys. We saw them go after and offer now a pair of 2025 highly touted prospects that go to Vero Beach where Tyler Aronson is committed. They've offered those guys now, TJ Alford and Robert Jones, two really, really impressive prospects. They're still going to get their bread buttered in Texas. And you factor that in with being able to have guys like a Demetrius Brisbane and a Ricky Stewart committed in this class of 2025. That gives you two guys that are top 200 prospects for on three. They're four star prospects when it comes to the on three industry ranking. And those guys are off to great starts. You know, Demetrius Brisbane is playing quarterback for Chapel Hill there in East Texas. Ricky Stewart is doing his thing at running back for that team as well. And with the move to the ACC, those guys just got harder for other programs to come and get. And it's just talking with people, look, there's a long way to go when it comes to recruiting for guys like Ricky Stewart, guys like Demetrius Brisbane. They committed so early that sometimes – and this will happen now that SMU is a higher level program. You can get guys to commit early. That's a good thing. You always want to kind of be playing from ahead in that sense and trying to hold on to those guys. But another thing that comes with that is you've certainly put them on the radar. You've got to fend off programs for the next year and a half or however long it is that you can get those guys committed. But like we talked about, roadblocks are disappearing when it comes to SMU recruiting and maybe having it be something where, well, they might get an early commitment, but you know what? He could have a big senior year. He could blow up one of those things. And then other programs come calling. And we saw that here and there over the last few years as a guy like a Jonathan McGill or even last cycle of Jaden Milner Jones goes to Colorado. Now they have the ACC logo on that chest that they're recruiting to. And that's really important. The class of 2024 sits here as probably one that's fairly done overall. I don't know what SMU is going to do from that standpoint of new targets emerging. Maybe they don't go after somebody who they would have late in the cycle like they did with maybe a Kevin Allen. I'm not saying Kevin Allen can't play in the ACC. I'm saying he wasn't highly recruited. Maybe SMU doesn't do that as much because they're going after guys that are on the radar for quite some time. And now you have this base of 2024. They've got a good group committed. They're going to go after and try to flip some guys. We mentioned them uh, for our On the Pony Express subscribers uh, in a piece that I did right after the ACC news drop. So check that out if you didn't get a chance to. Again, just a dollar to join. But that's really it for the most part when it comes to who they're going after and who they're trying to get because they know that the transfer portal is certainly there and that's going to be an avenue where SMU can really again make a lot of moves in because now they don't have uh, that um, overall issue of all right, well, that's great. They have NIL, they have opportunity, but they don't play in a power conference. All that is all that is out the window. So recruits have had a big reaction to uh, that news of the ACC. And on the Pony Express subscribers have also had a big reaction to one of our partners, and that is GameTime. GameTime.co or use the GameTime app. I was talking with one of our subscribers on uh, on the Pony Express 
just today. And he said, I, I went out and I got ahead on my SMU TCU tickets and was able to secure them early on. But the great thing about game time is that they are the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. No matter if you jump out ahead or you use them right before you're about to go to a game or go to a concert or go to whatever event you're looking for, that's because game time is obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. So download the game time app and browse through the app and you can find whatever game of the Mustangs you're looking for or whatever concert you want to go to. But uh, I was texting with our subscriber and before I knew it, he got the code pony used it for $20 off his purchase, his very first purchase of game time on game time and was able to get his SMU TCU tickets lined up. And they really have a lot of good deals going on right now. Um, obviously some of these that are on the screen for you guys are high up there. Uh, in those sections of uh, Amon G. Carter. But when you get down uh, into the 200s, even down in the lower bowl, I mean, look at here, right here. This is a picture of your tickets that you could get section 232 for about 200 bucks. And you use that promo code PONY to get $20 off your tickets for your first purchase using Game Time. Game Time is the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. And the big reason why is they're so easy to use. You can find the last minute tickets. You can use the flash deals. You can use the zone deals. They have the lowest price guarantee, um, which protects you. And with that game time guarantee, it means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code PONY for $20 off your first order on Game Time. Download the app or go to GameTime.co, but use that promo code for your first purchase. Terms apply, create an account, and redeem code PONY, that's P-O-N-Y, for $20 off. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. When I look at SMU's recruiting efforts in the class of 2025, I posted a story and it was free. It was just really a rundown of the um, top targets in the Dallas area um, for uh, the class of 2025. And when you look at the guys that SMU is recruiting and has that um, their sights set on them, it's a really impressive group. They have the ability to land one of the best classes, especially in the state of Texas. Look, it's always going to be a struggle to get up to that Texas, that Texas A&M level. But SMU is going to continue to target a lot of top targets in this in the state of Texas, but also in the Dallas area, and they just dish out, dished out a fresh offer to a teammate of one of SMU's 2024 commits, Alex Rogers. 2025 Cedar Hill offensive lineman Jordan Coleman picked up an offer from the Mustangs. You see it there, the on three RPM. Who's SMU battling right now? Oklahoma. But guess what? SMU is going to have an opportunity to get him on campus and make their push for him and try to really knock the Sooners off of that top peg. And, you know, he's a Cedar Hill guy. SMU's really been prioritizing Dallas in a big way. And when you flip over to the trenches, and I think this is one of the top areas where SMU is going to be able to make a change when it comes to their recruiting at the next level in the ACC is in the trenches. And Red Oak, 2025 four-star defensive lineman, Kamarian Morgan is one of the top guys on SMU's board. They actually lead the on three RPM and they've had him on campus multiple times. And in talking with Kamarian, uh, who is a teammate of 2024 SMU linebacker commit Zach Smith, he said this is a major move for the Mustangs in his recruitment. So this one really just got interesting. He's visited multiple times, but he is a guy that now, again, has really no questions about where SMU is going to be playing their football. 
When are they going to get a power conference invite? What does it look like if I end up going there as a group of five? All that's gone. Now SMU can recruit him as an ACC school, which is really important. And I think that is one of the key pieces here for this 2025 class because 2024 is already so far along. And a lot of guys have made decisions. We, I mentioned the piece on the flip targets, but that gives them time to establish relationships with 2025 guys, but also, again, can hammer home the fact that you'll always play in the ACC. You'll be able to be in that conference. And a guy that's having a big junior year is McKinney linebacker Riley Pettijohn, who has been on SMU's radar, has had an offer for a long, long time, but he is now, again, being able to look at SMU through the lens of a Power 5 program, and I think that's important. I'm intrigued to see what happens with him, but he is having a monster season so far at McKinney. And again, Texas, Florida, Florida State, plenty of others involved there, but he's a top 100 prospect for the on three industry ranking as well as on three. When you look at SMU's chances there, they got a little bit better. And the same goes for one of Keelan Russell's teammates, Tyron Polly. They call him Man Man. Again, SMU has 2024 safety commit Kadavian Dotson Walker on that Duncanville team. And him and Polly form one of the best safety tandems, I think, in the country. Um, they're both physical players. Uh, Polly, when I saw him at the uh, uh, Duncanville South Oak Cliff game, had an interception that really sealed it um, for, for the uh, Panthers. And we've got him right there in the top 250. Um, again, as as the on 300 expands, if it ended right now, he'd be a four star. Um, but as the 2025 class emerges, we're watching these guys develop. And Tyron, Tyron Polly's made a lot of really critical plays for Duncanville early on this season. And so he's another guy to watch. There's plenty more in that article. So check it out at ontheponyexpress.com. We have all of you guys covered on the recruiting side of things. I don't think um, many people would argue that front. Um, and you know, as the 2025 class approaches, we're going to get out there. We're going to see more of these guys. We're going to see who SMU has committed, who they have targeted. That's one of the perks for me at ontheponyexpress.com. You know, with this move to the ACC, the site's growing like crazy. So jump on board and support the site um, because as the more people subscribe, the easier it is for me to say, I'm going to go drive four hours and see a guy on a Friday night and then be back. Uh, for when SMU uh, plays either at home or get ready to cover the game from from uh, the seat uh, on my couch or whatever it, it may be. But um, this is exciting times for SMU. And, and just talking with a lot of sources, you can see the response that they've gotten has really hit home. And with Dalen Singleton committed, um, I'm looking forward to asking some of you know the coaches, some of uh, the players, you know, kind of how they see it and and look back on their recruitments and maybe how big of an impact this would have made for him. Some signed here out of high school. They wanted to be at SMU. Others came through the transfer portal. But in terms of building this program to that next level, SMU is going to have to continue to do it through the transfer portal. I think one of the things we learned maybe from the OU game is that SMU has to continue to recruit the offensive line well. They have to find maybe an alpha receiver. And maybe that happens over the course of this season. But those are some of the pieces on offense that I sit there and say SMU needs to maybe address in the transfer portal ahead of ACC play, especially especially when you maybe lose a couple offensive linemen. You know you're going to lose Hyron White, the right tackle. Um, you have P.J. Williams coming up. But if Marcus Bryant has a good season, he might be out the door. Who knows? So for SMU, they've got to continue to address that pos those positions um, and and build offensively in the trenches, which is something Rhett Lashley and Garen Justice have really prioritized. And I think the defense really held its own athletically for the most part. There were a few breakdowns. You saw that. and But for the most part, to do what they did to Oklahoma, to hear the Boo Birds come out a little bit for that offense in Norman was pretty surreal, um, if anybody was wondering just kind of how the defense played overall. They have a lot of guys who have been at the Power 5 level. They have a lot of guys who athletically fit at the Power 5 level. And they're going to have to continue to bring in those types of players. And as 
we watch the transfer portal, you know, turn and all those things, whether it be December and spring, there were guys that SMU would offer. And then they end up at a, at a power five kind of not randomly, but randomly, maybe the next time around, they get a couple more pieces that say, well, they're a power five, you know, program now until somebody comes up with, you know, power four, or, you know, a top three conference, I should say, uh, moniker for this group that is emerging SMU is going to be able to address those positions with high level guys that maybe don't get that cold feet. SMU missed on a Keytron Jackson. They missed on a Jake Roberts. They had a couple of other guys here in their last transfer portal cycle that you think maybe they come here if they know they're playing in the ACC in the future. But that's going to be the exciting part to track when that transfer portal window opens come December. We know that Pony Sports DTX has raised a bunch of money since the ACC move, and it's not even a transfer portal window. So again, I tell you guys, subscribe and join on theponyexpress.com. We'll have it covered for you when you're looking at who's next in the transfer portal, who's next in recruiting for the Mustangs. So want to talk a little bit of recruiting on this edition of the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back on track with a lot more team talk later this week. Um, and so be sure to be on the lookout for that by subscribing to our YouTube channel or Spotify or Apple, wherever you catch your podcast at. We'll have it for you. Um, all that coverage as SMU prepares for Prairie View A&M this weekend in Ford Stadium, a Saturday night game on ESPN+. Plus. So hope you guys enjoyed this edition of the podcast, and we'll catch you later this week with more coverage of the SMU Mustangs. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.